at this point, it can't be a surprise. There have been a number of reports already indicating that the New York Knicks are going to trade for an all-star or a superstar player this offseason. But that isn't the only important decision they have to make. They also have to decide who's going to be their starting center moving forward. Is it going to be Isaiah Hartenstein? Is it going to be Mitchell Robinson? Could Preston Chua get some money? They're going to have to make that decision. And recently, Bobby Marks of ESPN gave us an evaluation of Isaiah Hartenstein's value. We're going to break down exactly what he said and what Hartenstein's value is right now. All of this and so much more today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now and make sure you have notifications turned on so you don't miss a second of the new content. And now, let's get started. Isaiah Hartenstein's value has been revealed by the one and only Bobby Marks. Now, you can look at a lot of different ESPN analysts. You can take a look at their body of work, who they are. Win Horst, of course, is one of them. Zach Lowe is another. Bon Temps is another. But for me, Bobby Marks is at the top of the list. Former GM, great insider, has a lot of insider details that you can't find anywhere else. And when he says something, when he gives you an evaluation, you could take it to the bank. It likely means that's what's going to go down. And recently, he gave an evaluation of Isaiah Hartenstein, his value, and what it could possibly be going into this offseason. And for me, it was a little bit lower than I expected, which might be good news for the New York Knicks. Let's take a look at Marks and what he said. According to Bobby Marks, Isaiah Hartenstein, who has stepped up into the role of starting center after Mitchell Robinson's injury, will be an unrestricted free agent in the summer. His value, as estimated by Bobby Marks, is a $13 million to $14 million annual salary. The Knicks already have a starting center under contract, Mitchell Robinson, who is recovering from a second surgery to his feet and will be paid $14.32 million next season. He's on a descending contract, though, so his contract's going to go down each and every year. Hartenstein, on the other hand, is in his second season with the Knicks and has been a vital part of the team. The 25-year-old is averaging 6.9 points, 8.4 rebounds, 2.2 assists, and 1 steal and 1.1 blocks per contest while shooting 61.6% .6 from the field in 61 games played. Now, I don't know about you guys, but 13 to 14 million for a player like Isaiah Hartenstein Somebody who is doing everything that he can to basically replace Mitchell Robinson in the starting lineup until he comes back. And he's not only done that, but he's done a great job of making sure he incorporates his own skill set into that starting role as well, too. That's why the passing is happening more. That's why Isaiah Hartenstein is not somebody that you have to worry about holding the ball inside the paint because he'll pass to the wings, he'll pass to the open guards, he'll pass to the perimeter. He has a great assist game, and it's underrated for a big man. The Knicks have that and more with iHeart. That's why they're not as worried with Mitchell Robinson out right now. It's because of iHeart and the impact that he has. But that impact is going to cost a little bit of money. But 13 to 14 million was a lot lower than I expected. Given Isaiah Hartenstein, what he means to this team, everything he's been doing, I thought he would at least get maybe around 17, 18 million a year. To hear it's around 13 to 14 is an absolute steal. But then we go back and we look at Mitchell Robinson. He's making around the exact same. Do the Knicks really want to have two centers on their roster making around 13 to 14 million each and every year? That's going to be the question they're going to have to decide on. Because you have to remember, those are the only two big men they have to worry about. Precious Achua, they have to worry about him as well, too. Not in the same vein as Hartenstein, because he's an unrestricted free agent. I believe Achua is a restricted free agent. So there is some differences to look at, but the money is still going to have to matter there. Achua has been playing the best basketball of his entire career since the trade to New York. We're going to have to look at that. And the reason the Knicks have been able to float by, not great, but at least float by without Randall, is because of the play of Achua. Everybody realizes that. So he's likely going to get paid from somebody. I hope it's the New York Knicks because I think he's a quality big man off the bench to have. So you have Achua that you're going to have to pay. You're going to have to make a decision between Robinson and Hartenstein. And that's probably going to come down to the trade you're likely going to make this offseason, who you're going to have to include in that trade, and who you believe in the most. 
who you think is going to be available for you the most. We can't hide it at this point in time. It's very clear. Mitchell Robinson and that injury history is starting to build up. Each and every year, he's starting to have an injury. That's concerning when he's your starting center. Now, Hartenstein, he doesn't have the same type of injury history that Mitchell Robinson does. However, as a big man playing a physical type of play under Tom Thibodeau, injuries are likely going to happen. Right now, he's dealing with the sore Achilles. He's on a limited minutes restrictions at this point in time, and he's working himself back into full minutes again. That's saying something because even the center that we have replacing our starting center is dealing with injuries. That means no matter who you have playing that position, they're likely going to suffer some type of injuries each and every year. The only issue is how long are they going to be out for? How long are they going to be affected by that type of injury? And how impactful are they going to be when the games matter and the New York Knicks need them? Isaiah Hartenstein right now is playing the games that matter for the New York Knicks because we're battling for seeding. And when we get to the postseason, those games are going to matter even more. I love Mitchell Robinson and his defense, what he means for this Knicks team and that impact. But offensively, he leaves a lot to be desired. On the other end of that, Isaiah Hartenstein, his defense and offense are great. However, his defense compared to Mitch is nowhere close. Mitchell Robinson's defense is elite. It's way better than Hartenstein's. And not only that, he puts a fear in these opposing players that Hartenstein just cannot do. And that's something you have to credit Mitch with. Each of these players, Hartenstein, Mitchell Robinson, they both impact the game differently for the New York Knicks. They both help the New York Knicks differently. That's why for me, I would love to keep them both because when they're both available for the New York Knicks, it gives the Knicks the best big man duo in terms of defense in the league. Hartenstein off the bench and Mitchell Robinson starting, that is insane. But the only reason for me, I might lean a little bit more with Hartenstein than I do with Mitchell Robinson is just the way Hartenstein plays on the offensive side of the ball. It's not the way he scores or how he scores or what he does on that side. It's because he's not a liability there. He can score. He can pass. He can do multiple things on the offensive side of the ball as well as defensively. He gives you both. He just doesn't only give you one. With Robinson, he really only gives you that defense. Offensively, yeah, he can give you putbacks and things like that, but that's really it. He's limited there. He might be able to give you lob dunks as well, too. But other than that, what else does he give you offensively? Not much. He doesn't have a lot of post moves. And even the post moves that he has, he doesn't show them a lot. And when he does show them, oftentimes he gets stuffed, the ball gets stolen, or something else like that happens. We have to recall what happened in the past. I'm not saying he's the same player he used to be. Definitely not that. But we have to take the past as an example of what could potentially happen in the future offensively in the past, when you gave him the go-ahead, it didn't look good. And now, even today, it may not look good. But if he wants to try it, I have no problem with Robinson trying some more offensive moves because maybe he worked on them and he's better at them now than he was before. Okay, let me see it. But if it's not good, then we have to focus on what you do best. And that's what Tom Thibodeau, love him or hate him, that's what he does with his players. He tries to get the most the max out of each and every player that steps foot on that floor. If you're just a great shooter, he'll try to maximize that. If you're just a great defender, he'll try to maximize that. If you have a little bit of everything, he'll try to maximize that as well too. Tom Thibodeau, not for nothing. And sometimes I don't like what he does as a coach. But oftentimes, you have to give him his praise because while the Knicks have been floating by, he's the one that's been experimenting, creating lineups, creating rotations, trying things out seeing what works. You have to give him credit for that because an older Tom Thibodeau would have not done that. A modern day Tom Thibodeau though, he's experimenting and he's trying things. Maybe he has no choice but to do that, but still credit for him for doing it in the first place. And some people are going to ask, why can't they keep both? Why can't they keep both? The reason they can't keep both is because they're looking to trade for an all-star or superstar this off season. They're looking to add that other star to this roster. And if that's going to happen, they can't keep all of these players. Somebody is going to have to go, whether that be Robinson, Isaiah Hartenstein. Somebody is going along with other players and picks for that star or superstar. Best believe that. So maybe some of your favorite players who are on the roster right now may not be here. We saw RJ and Emmanuel quickly leave, go, went to Toronto. Nobody expected that move to happen. 
It broke some people. Some people definitely didn't expect it. And it still hurts for some people. For me, I'm happy the Knicks have moved forward and have gotten better after the trade. That's what I'm looking at. But people look at different things. It's fine. If you still have some favorites on this Knicks team, all I got to say is if his name is not Jalen Brunson, he's likely going to be somebody the New York Knicks look at and try to use in the offseason to try to get that all-star or superstar. All I'm trying to say is right now, the Knicks have set themselves up in a prime position to get that player. Who it is, that's the question mark. But we know for a fact that they're going to likely be a player this offseason to make a trade. They can't keep everybody. Somebody's going to have to go. The Knicks are going to have to make that decision. Does Robinson stay? Does Hartenstein stay? That's going to be the good question to ask. It's anybody's guess, but ultimately, it's going to be up to the New York Knicks to make that final decision. But what about you guys? What do you think of Bobby Mark's price evaluation of Isaiah Hartenstein? Basically saying he might be in the 13 to $14 million range, which basically put him in the Kelly Olynyk price range. Let me know in the comments below, guys, because honestly, I would love to hear from you. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button, leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.